Speaking of candles and making stuff, um, which is what the last video was on if you didn't watch it, um, I thought maybe now would be a good time to show you guys my altar. Um, I've posted altar videos before, but I haven't posted one about my actual working altar. Um, it's not set up for anything particular right now, but I always have it set up in some fashion in my room just because um, it kind of grounds the whole room. Um, it's really important to me to always have it someplace close to me. Um, and the bedroom is just, it's such a natural place, I think. Um, it's always felt that way to me. I've, I've, ha I've always had an altar. I set one up right away when I first started. and It's definitely evolved, but um, this is kind of the gist of it. It hasn't changed much. Um, and just to give you a heads up, this is this particular altar setup is not in any way reflective of um, my tradition or my coven um, or any of my training or anything. It's just sort of what has always felt kind of natural to me. Um, so I just wanted to kind of give you a disclaimer there. Anyway, here it is. Um, it's set up on what is an old wash basin. Basin? Basin? I think they're both technically correct. Let's go with basin. That sounds good. Um, that I got at a flea market here in town. Um, I really love it a lot because it's got um, the cabinet here, which is where I keep extra stuff. Um, and the drawer, which is where the important books live. Um, and then it's got this... It's I guess it's for washcloths or something. And... I just sort of use it for things that are some way significant to me. There's a painting, um, and there's some of the pentacle necklaces I've accumulated over the years. Things from past rituals and circles, and things friends have given me that have been important. Um, and I've got a little, like, um, um, it's kind of a wire thing that's got, like, hooks on it. Um, that my mom got me for the holidays several years ago. And I've stuck um, pictures and there's some snake skin and things that I found outside. There's a pentacle tambourine that I found at a music shop a few years ago that I thought was cool, kind of crowning the whole thing. Um, and then the altar itself. I've got lots of room. I like having a relatively large altar. Um, I'd love to have a larger one, actually, but this is pretty sizable, I think, for a home altar. Um, anyway, I think pretty much everything is self-explanatory. I don't think, I think you'll pretty much recognize everything. Um, but like I was saying in the beginning, speaking of making things, even if you're not crafty, it can be really, really rewarding to make your own tools and your own supplies. And I know a lot of people have posted videos on that, so again, I don't feel the need to elaborate. I just sort of wanted to put an exclamation point on that, that observation. Um, I try to make what I can, and the things that I don't make, I like to, um, I like to get second hand. And I know a lot of, a lot of witches and a lot of pagans of other stripes don't like second hand items, especially things like second hand tarot cards or, um, anything that you're going to use, anything that's going to be really closely tied to in ritual, especially over a prolonged period of time, um, like an athame or, um, a wand or a pentacle or something. Um, but I've never had a problem with it. Um, I'm a big fan of secondhand. I like the idea that things have had previous lives. Um, and it's just, it's never been an issue for me. And the way I see it is even if an item is brand new, it's still, it's, there's a really good chance that it's been mass produced and it's come into contact with a lot of people. I mean, the people who made it and the people who shipped it and then however long it sat around in that store. So it's come into contact with people. Um, and I think, at least with a second-hand item, it has more of a history. Um, and you can maybe even kind of get a sense about what it was doing before it was with you. Anyway, it's not a big deal. It's totally personal preference, but I just think it's kind of neat. Um, and some of my favorite tarot decks I've gotten secondhand. I do have a collection, which I will show you at some point. Um, but I know a lot of people are really sensitive, and that's fine. Um, but I'm not. Um, I like it. So 
I'm all about used. So a lot of the stuff that you see, like uh, my water dish, that's a uh, thrift store find, and the bell, um, some of the candle holders, that sort of thing. It's a little altar cloth. Uh, the pentacle I made, the wand I made. Um, these are seven day candles that the glass I've painted. Um, I made the statues. Um, I found the antlers. Um, let's see. Some of the jewelry I've made, like this is this is something that I've made. It's kind of a take on a rosary, um, but clearly it is goddess oriented. Um, yeah, so little things like that. The little goddess I made her. You can't really see her very clearly because her arms are full of stuff. Um, anyway, that's my altar. Um, I'm quite fond of it. So there's the full view. Yeah, and I'm I'm really lucky that I live by myself and I've I don't have to explain myself to any to anyone. I know some of you guys have roommates or you live with your parents or spouses or whatever and maybe it's weird to be so open about it, but I really really like living alone. <laughs> um and this is one of the reasons. This isn't the only reason, but it's a big one. Um I like being able to kind of take up my space and make it my own and not having to share and anyway so there it is there is another altar close by it which is an altar set up for um, one of the deities that I work with um, I won't show you that one in detail right now um, but I don't know if you're curious about more of what's underneath it's just sorry it's really dark um, everything underneath is somehow ritual related there's nothing mundane over here. Um, so there's some extra candles and in the big the big cedar box is where the herbs live. Um, the little brown box is oils and anyway there's some incense charcoals and other stuff. Um, and then all of those books that I showed you in the video that I did, that I did about the Book of Shadows um, those pretty much all live in the drawer. A couple of them live underneath because they couldn't fit. Um, oh, and they're, they're the drums. I've got three of them. Quite fond of them. This also seems like a good time to say, um, and Fate is Knocking made a video about this. Um, one of her more recent videos where she was talking about getting her broom. Um, you don't need to get everything at once. And I know this hardly even needs repeating because everyone says that and it's totally true. I've been I've been practicing some variation of Wicca for my entire adult life and a really big chunk of my adolescence. So this is as well as the books behind me. This is the product of more than a decade of making and collecting and um studying and reading and Anyway, so I think some people, they start up and they feel the need to just go out and buy a lot of stuff or make a lot of stuff, and it's really just not necessary. Um, I, I'm not nearly savvy enough with computer or with the movie program on said computer in order to like edit in photographs, but I have pictures of some of my first altars, especially some of the ones I made in high school, and they're really, really minimal. Um, so... I guess I'm just trying to say, don't feel bad. Um, and also, something that I think I've tried to point out in other videos that also shouldn't need to be repeated, but maybe it does, um, is practicing Wicca doesn't cost money. It's not about money. Um, there's no aspect of the craft that involves spending at all. Um, I mean we're people and we're materialistic and we like stuff and as much as we try not to be materialistic we just I mean we are and that's okay all of us to an extent um, I'm very very um, tactile I like objects and like I was saying about the second hand thing I just I like the idea that objects have histories um, so I like having things maybe more than a lot of people um, but I just wanted to emphasize that you don't need to have an herb collection, and you don't need to have a broom, and you don't need to have a one-of-a-kind athame, and, you know, you don't need to make candles, and all this other stuff. Um, 
it's really just about your connection with um, with the divine, whatever in whatever capacity that is. And I think that's true of most religions. Um, it's really not about money. Um, so, anyway, I leave you with that. But I just wanted to kind of make that point. Um, so, because I think a lot of beginners, like I said, they start and you can you can see them on YouTube or on forums or chat rooms or something, and it's like, okay, I just. I just read Scott Cunningham slash Silver Ravenwolf slash whoever, and, you know, I really want to get involved in Wicca, and what do I need? You don't need anything. Um, maybe an open mind um, and a spirit of adventure. Sorry. Um, but anyway, that really can't be emphasized enough. So here I am emphasizing it again. So hope you guys are getting ready for what will be a fun in bulk.